Welcome to My Time with Glory. This is Season 1, Episode 1. I'm going to ask you to make a commitment to yourselves today. In that commitment, you are going to listen to these podcasts with intention. Your intention is to heal, to take psychoeducation in coping skills, mindfulness, data on how trauma happens and what the symptoms are. And your intention would be to spend time listening, thinking, processing, practicing coping skills, practicing to reach the goal, your goal of healing. We are going to begin today with a relaxation exercise, a form of mindfulness. We're going to use our mind, our body, and our soul to come together and relax. So what I want you to do is take a deep breath in and hold it as long as you can comfortably. Then I want you to let the air out slowly. As you let the air out, you can feel your body relax. You can feel the tension leaving your body. This time, when you take a breath in, fill your lungs as far as they will fill and hold it in as long as you can comfortably. And as you're holding the air in this time, I want you to notice where in your body you're holding tension and I want you to relax those body parts. So take a deep breath in. Letting it out slowly, letting the tension flow out of you with each breath. This time I want you to repeat, fill your lungs with air, as much air as you can take in, and hold it in as long as you can. This time, notice, see if your jaw is locked, and if it is, loosen your jaw, just open your mouth a little, open your jaw, let it kind of hang open a little bit. Move your neck around, get those kinks out of those trapezoid muscles, out of your neck, out of your shoulders. Take a deep breath in. Loosening your jaw. Moving your head and neck around, circular motion. I want you to clench your shoulders up to your head, crunching those muscles, those trapezoid muscles, and then let your shoulders fall back down. Repeat that. Crunch your shoulders up towards your head, the back of your head, hold it, and let it down. And once again, hold your shoulders up, way up to your head, crunching it into your head, and then let it back down. That helps to release a lot of tension in the muscles in your trapezoids. The trapezoids are the muscles that attach your neck to your shoulders and your shoulder blades. Now this time we're going to fill our lungs up with air again and hold it as long as we can and we're going to let our tummies pooch out because we hold a lot of tension in our tummies. So pooch out your tummy, 
Let your arms and legs become noodles, jello, just so loose, so heavy, just relax. So take that deep breath of air. your body, noticing how relaxed you are now, your jaw is relaxed, your neck, your shoulders, your back, your tummy are all relaxed, your arms are loose and relaxed, your legs are loose and relaxed, just wiggle your hands and your fingers, your ankles, your feet and your toes, gently moving them to get that tension out. Take another deep breath. Letting it out, letting all the tension out. Letting all the negativity body. Feel how relaxed you are. How calm, calm and relaxed. Relaxed and calm. Now we're just going to breathe one more time. Take a deep breath of air, fill your lungs and hold it as long as you can. Letting out all the last little bits of any tension and stress that there might be inside your body, your mind, and your soul. So take that deep breath. Good, good. We can work on our trauma by recognizing that if we are struggling with anxiety, panic, sadness, depression, isolation, anger, behavioral issues, addiction, all of those stem from trauma. The roots of that are trauma. We are often exposed to trauma in very early years. For example, some of us may come from broken homes, some of us may have a parent that has some type of addiction or behavioral outbursts. Trauma can rear its ugly head in relationships, in relationships with our parents, our children, our partners, colleagues at work, neighbors, friends. Perhaps we lived in a home that was chaotic and unstable. Perhaps we moved often. The more traumatized we are, the less functional we are in interacting successfully with others in society. We can also suffer trauma in early grade school. The preteen and teen years are very susceptible to trauma. There is a lot of bullying, cliques, people trying to figure out who they are, how they fit in, what their interests are, how they should look, how they should behave, who they want to be. It's a very delicate time for human beings and people often get traumatized during these years. We can also get traumatized within a relationship or multiple relationships. People that don't understand us, people we can't communicate well with, people that exploit us, people that cheat on us, people that lie to us, people that abuse us, neglect us, or very rarely, if ever, meet our needs. 
When we are in relationships like that, whether it's with a parent, both parents, a partner, or even with a child, a neighbor, or a colleague, we can get traumatized. We are very delicate beings, us humans. And so during these episodes in this podcast, we are going to focus on exactly what trauma is, how we may have been traumatized, what can we do to help ourselves and to heal. The first skill that I'm going to go over with you is called reparenting yourself. So if you think back during childhood, what was it that you needed from your parents the most? What was it that you needed for them to say to you, to give to you as a child? Perhaps you didn't feel understood or valued. Perhaps you were afraid of one or both of your parents. Perhaps you didn't feel loved, truly loved and cherished. Perhaps you didn't feel like you had a voice or that you had any respect from your parents or your family. Think about what it was that you needed from them. And is all of that affecting you now, today? Are those things that you're needing in your relationships with others? Are you hypersensitive when you feel that you are not getting those needs met? Is it causing problems for you in your friendships, your romantic relationships, your interactions with all of those around you? If the answer is yes, then it may be beneficial for you to practice this reparenting skill. Each day, you tell yourself the things that you really need to hear, the things that you needed to hear when you were younger. For example, you're beautiful. You are so beautiful. I love you. You're worthy of love. You're special. You're talented. You're amazing. You're going to have a wonderful day, a fantastic life. You're going to make so many friends. Everybody loves you. You're very smart, exceptionally talented. You look fantastic just the way you are. Those are the things that you needed to hear from your parents and others that were around you. Grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends. If you didn't get that, you need to start giving yourself that. And it may feel very unnatural and weird and you might even laugh about it. But if you actually intentionally take the time to do it and tell yourself these things each day, things will start to shift within your own subconscious and within your own mind and your own behavior, which will cause things to shift in your environment and with people that are around you. You can get up in the morning, look out the window, say, hey, good morning. This is going to be a fantastic day. I love you and you're going to do a great job today. You're going to have a wonderful day. You're smart and you're talented. Tell yourself those things. And if you're feeling down during the day or anxious or depressed or sad or angry, Comfort yourself. Tell yourself, it's okay. You're going to be okay. I love you. You're going to get through this. You are amazing. That's called reparenting yourself. It's not the same as if someone was doing it for you 
to you, you're doing it for yourself and to yourself. It doesn't have the exact same effect, but it does have a positive effect. It does work on your subconscious and it will help you. Take this as a challenge. Let this be your challenge, your goal to work on this week. Every day, work on reparenting yourself, but don't just stop with this week. Just try to get into the habit of it this week by doing it daily throughout the day, whenever you need it, and in the morning when you wake up. Another thing that you might consider doing is journaling, writing down your thoughts and your feelings. Try writing down your thoughts and your feelings before you go to bed at night. But always end with a positive note in your journal. Say something kind and nice to yourself about yourself. Praise yourself. Find five things to be grateful for and happy for. Look back over your day and think to yourself, for example, gee, you know, it was a beautiful day today. The weather was amazing. The sun was shining. The temperature was great. A co-worker paid me a compliment and made me smile. My dog was waiting for me at the door when I got home. I had a wonderful dinner. I tried a new recipe. I watched my favorite YouTube channel when I got home after dinner. And then I sat down and I read a magazine. I had a great day. I feel happy. I feel good. And tomorrow, I'm looking forward to calling an old friend or going for a walk during my break time or trying a new restaurant. Give yourself one thing to look forward to in each day. If you can't find anything to look forward to, create something for yourself. It could be something as easy as starting to read a new book, a trip to the library, driving to a park that you had not explored, going for a walk with your dog, calling an old friend. It's easy to create something to look forward to. It can be something simple and something free. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of this episode and you're that much closer to your goal in healing. Consider practicing these skills and journaling this week. And I look forward to being with you again in our next episode. Consider sharing this podcast with others that may need it. And don't forget to visit my page at patreon.com slash glory of the west or buymeacoffee.com slash glory of the west. There you will find many free resources to help you specifically with different issues you're struggling with.